So Motherland Fort Salem kicked off its third and final season, which still makes me sad. But at the same time, that means I get a chance to talk to some great people that have been a part of the show from the beginning. And if you get a chance to talk to Petra Bellwether, you're going to take it. It's Catherine Law Hagquist. <laughs> Thank you. So, hey, Catherine Law Hagquist, how you doing? I'm so great. Thank you so much for having us and for promoting our show and for for all the support you've given Motherland. And we really, really appreciate it. I feel like every time I see you, though, I, I feel like, do, do I salute? Do I do I what, what do I do? I feel like you've just built this persona up so much over the years. I'm like, I'm, I'm intimidated. What do I do? Do, do I salute? Do I say hi? Well, what, what, what happens? A hi is great. And call me. Please call me Kat. Like there's a whole lot of letters in that name. We were working on the pronunciation. The fastest and easiest way to get my attention is just call me Kat. And please feel welcome to do so. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys kicked off your your final season of the series. I want you to talk about the fans for a moment because I think that you all have one of the best fandoms going right now. How much have you loved the passion from these fans for these characters over the years from the very beginning? It has been such a joy to get to interact with them, to get to to see their ideas about what they think is going to happen with the show, to see their reactions to what does happen with the show, um, to see how much they embrace the characters and are protective of them. Um, Elliot's done such a great job at creating this world that what feels really unique about our fans is that they're part of the world with us and it doesn't feel like there's a separation. Like they feel like inhabitants of this wonderful universe of Motherland Fort Salem. So just really grateful that we got to wrap it up for them as well. Um, a lot of people ask like, what do you think about it being three seasons? And I'm just so grateful we got to know to be able to create such a, a ride for the fans um, so that it doesn't just end abruptly. Like we, we finish it up right. So it feels it feels really good that we've got the opportunity to to honor their support of us by giving them a really great season. That is such a great way to look at it too. Let's get into the season season three premiere event. So so if you haven't seen it yet, what aired on Tuesday you know, spoiler alert, just in case you haven't seen it yet, I want to throw that out there. So we saw how tense things are at the fort right now. Just how much pressure would you say Petra's under right now? And is this kind of only the beginning? Well, it is only the beginning. But one of the things I love about the way Petra's written is that she's constantly on the knife edge, having to balance her motherhood and her military um obligations and trying to navigate that in a way that is that is authentic and shows the conflict that those two very strong pulls would be on her and, and the worry that, that you don't just balance that in a fearless place, but that you actually show your vulnerabilities as you try and do the best possible thing with each possible decision. So it's been uh, it, but she's got a lot ahead. She's got a lot of things to navigate. It's just when she thinks she has a handle on it, she doesn't. Oh, that's an understatement right there. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that, though, because I feel like Petra's one of the most loyal soldier, soldiers that you're ever going to find in any unit. So talk a bit about how big it was for her to break from that a bit, to help her daughter and the others escape at the end of the last last season and keep that secret. I think, I think she abides by a code. And so I think she recognizes when things need decisions need to be taken in support of the higher ideal. And I think that's also why it's so difficult for her because she, she still has to honor the, the oaths she's taken and the, and the obligation she has, not just to her daughter, but to the rest of her army. And so I think, yeah, I don't know if I'm answering the question the right way, but I'm, I'm definitely, it's been so fun to sort of dive into each of the scripts as the story unfolds over the season to try and figure out, you know, what would I do if I was in that position? Would I, would I be able to play it the way she does, or would I tip over to one side or the other because of how emotionally it pulls on me? So yeah, she's challenging that way. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. It makes sense to me. I thought that was perfect. So Let's talk about that call for a minute that we had in the season three premiere. We see Petra and Abigail. They get to speak to one another for the first time since she, you know, she had to go into hiding. How important was it for them to have that connection in the midst of everything that's going on? I think it reassures Petra that, that the soldier she knows her daughter to be is still able to function and, and to protect herself and those of her unit. I think it gives her some ease to know she's still got some time to try and protect her daughter and come up with another plan. I think, I think there's, there's a lot of things. I also think it gives her um, 
some reassurance to get information that she's gathered to Abigail. And I think that that's important to her as well, because it's one thing to sort of trust your daughter has great instincts. It's another to know something that's a, a threat to her and not be able to get that information to her as part of her strategy. So I think there's a lot of ways that that call is so important to Petra being able to bring her focus back to, to the bigger plate at hand. And again, one of those only be the beginning type things too. You can, uh, yeah, you can absolutely tell that. You used the word code a second ago, and I thought that was really important because mm -hmm. I had that circled right here because bellwethers have their codes, they mm -hmm. have their principles, and those are of uh, utmost importance. So in your opinion, do you think Abigail not wanting to change her face that we saw in the season three premiere to hide out is mostly about her not wanting to use that spree magic? I think it's part of that, but I also think it's part of the masterful way in which this world is created as so allegorical to our times in general. Like, I think it's really, um, really meaningful for a woman of color to say, I don't want to change my face. Uh, to, to make things easier or to, to move away from who I am as I try and navigate to a more stable situation. And I think that that is, a, I think that's a very profound image and a profound context to place that whole discussion in because, because it isn't an option. And so to, to sort of reject that as the easy way out uh, and to stay true to sort of, I will stand as myself and I will fight as myself, I think is really important especially in these times that is amazing i hadn't even thought about that that is very very well put talking Thank to Catherine you. law hagquist who of course plays petra bellwether on motherland fort salem which you can see every tuesday night on freeform and of course next day on hulu okay ha okay cat one of the biggest storylines this season will be what's going on with adler now when i talked to elliot lawrence last week he said that adler's going to be going quite a journey this season no spoilers of course but how do you think petra would react to finding out that Alder is still out there? Um, they've had such a journey, these two, you know? I mean, and when you think about how, how long Alder has been a force, um, how many generations of bellwethers have served Alder, and then to be part of the, the uh, transition that Alder is going through in terms of, of all of that, I think, I think it weighs on, on, Petra, especially because things were going great up until she got took over and then she had a really bad first couple of days of work. So I think, uh, I think her reflections on what she's learned, um, both generationally passed on through the Bellwether line, but also in her own service to Alder, I think is framed in a different context now that Alder's not there. And I think that that is part of where Alder's journey during this season becomes really interesting when they, when they do intertwine. Well, I can tell you, Kat, it's easy to have a bad day at work when you've got the Camarilla seemingly entrenching themselves in the government. And it's not like Petra can just kind of, you know, lead the charge against them and remove them just with a, with a coup or something, something like that. So especially with the witch plague, that's still a play, too. So can we see mm -hmm. more of her political prowess come out a little bit more this season? I think she definitely has to to navigate some of the political waters. I mean, she's still an employee of the government. You know, so um, while up until this point, there was a certain degree of autonomy that Alder had in terms of how she decided to run the military, that definitely gets gets challenged. And there are, you know, it's always a challenge to have to respect the office, even if you don't respect the holder of it. So I think that becomes a really important balancing, another degree of balance that Petra has to explore in terms of how to navigate staying in her role so that she can protect her soldiers, but also not giving them reason to, to remove her. So in case you couldn't tell the show runs a lot deeper than you might think it does. Just you, yeah. you, the points that she's bringing up, you might go, Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. This show's deep people. If you never realized that before, it really, it really, really is. is. And he, every season I'm amazed at how many parallels there are to what's going on in the world at large that are reflected in, in amazingly specific imagery mm -hmm. in the, in the motherland Fort Salem universe. And so it's been really satisfying to know that as we navigate what's happening in the broader world, this story will still be there to sort of be um, a motif for how that gets navigated and, and educational in an allegorical sense about how to try and do good in the world.
Most definitely. Now, yeah. one of the things that makes me happy is we know that we've got where Petra's got some allies on her side. We know that, but things are certainly not. I mean, th that doesn't make it safe. It's still very, very dangerous. Again, mm -hmm. I'm going to say no spoilers, but could we see more allies coming her way in future episodes or could there be some defectors possibly? There's a lot that's possible. That's what's scary <laughs> though, Kat. You're, you're scaring me here. You're scaring the fans. Everybody wants to make sure that Petra comes out of this okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm just I'm just hoping that she's going to have more people on her side coming up. Uh, I think that, you know, circumstances make for unusual, unusual allegiances. So, yeah, I definitely think that there's some 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 surprises in, in store for how it all unfolds. See, I've got the idea. Because it's so well crafted that I'm like, if I pull this string, does that unlo unlock this? And so I'm trying to be as cryptic as possible so that oh, you have to take I, I have the ideas <laughs> rattling around in my head, too. I can only imagine what happens for you guys when you're reading the scripts. So one of the things that I've always loved about this show is the incredible cast. You guys have had such great chemistry, like right from the get go. What's it been like for you working with everyone, especially Ashley, and building these relationships on the screen? Uh, but it has been such a joy to spend so much time in the company of women, in the company of creative women, in the company of women filled with agency and clarity about their own walk on this planet. It's been a real treat and I miss them. And I'm, I'm working on a feature film now and it's a decidedly different energy. And as much as I'm loving it, it's just, it's, it's different. Like we had this really little utopian scenario for three, three seasons. And, and it, it really, I mean, it's such a cliche to say it became like family, but you know, I, I, I miss them. I miss the girls and I miss Miss Demetria and I miss, um, Lynn Renee, um, who, who we had a lot of scenes together and, and it feels like you're missing, missing folks who should be around. So um, it's hard. It's hard not to miss that group. That's for it sure. is. No it doubt. Is. And it was also really um, also just because the show did such a great job at showing different generations of womanhood, um, because if in season one and two, the biddies, you know, I mean, we had such diversity in terms of age and stage and representation on the screen. And so to to be able to celebrate that and then to sort of mourn that oh gosh that was really like such a, a highlight of, of my career and of storytelling in terms of being so woman focused and and um but intersectional and and supportive of just i don't know this spectrum of of humanity through this lens of female storytelling i thought was really really special and and to see these, the younger set, the younger three, sort of mature as their own individual artists and women as they were also reflecting the journey of these three soldiers was also really satisfying. You know, the kids are all right. They're That's always good to know. That's always yeah. good to know. <laughs> Kat, before I let you go, what's the one thing you'll always remember about working on this show other than, of course, what you just mentioned? Um, just the feeling of being supported, the feeling of being able to to just rely um, without question on, on my scene partners and to know that we, we would work it out and we would figure it out and, and to really be able to collaborate with the directors. We had such an amazing group of directors um, and just the sense of fun, like the sense of knowing we were telling important stories that were through a, a fantasy lens, but still had a lot of meaning and um, and, Hopefully, with the entertainment value comes some really inspiring thoughts about how we should treat each other and how difference can can be special and unique and uh, and embraced. Absolutely. We get to see how it all shakes out this season. The final season of Motherland Fort Salem, which airs every Tuesday night on Freeform. You're going to want to watch it again. I know this. You know this. So watch it again on Hulu the next day and see everything that she and the wonderful cast has to offer. It's Catherine Law Hagquist. Thank you so much. For taking the time today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time.